What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade for the third week here in February of 2019. We're also gonna be talking about some stocks and ETFs that you guys DM'd me on Instagram that you guys wanted me to talk about in this video. So thanks to everybody out there that did DM me. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram, guys, my at name is at Stas. Surface one word, no underscores, and you can also click the link down below in the description box, and you can follow me through that link as well. I'm posting pretty much daily content there on the stories, and I'm also answering DMs of any questions you guys have on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to go to the Instagram, shoot me a follow, and of course, shoot me a DM, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So let's start off this video today talking about the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest U.S. publicly traded companies, so we can get a better understanding of where the market is pushing, where we could be potentially headed over these next couple of weeks and days, so we can get a better understanding of what we're going to be trading, whether it be large cap stocks, put options on large, you know, cap stocks, you know, maybe inverse ETFs, bear ETFs, or bull ETFs. We got to see where the market is pushing. We have to understand where the major indices are pushing so we can make this decision guys so we all know from the beginning of 2019 pretty much since after christmas of 2018 the markets have been on an absolute tear right the spx i believe it's up nearly 16 percent let's double check right now it's up about 15.5 percent to be exact, from the low at about 2,346 that we did experience there right around Christmas time of 2018. And since then, guys, we've obviously been uptrending higher highs, higher lows, and we're getting closer to this resistance at around $2,800, with the next one being at around $2,815. So, guys, these next couple of days, especially leading up to that March 1st trade war, uh, agreement deadline they're going to be absolutely critical guys because not only are we coming towards that deadline where if we don't make an agreement with the president of china you know this could send the market in shambles but we're also nearing the support or resistance levels rather from the time back in october and november and december where we sold off drastically so you know in a technical basis right now we're at very important levels, and not only that, but we're in a very critical time period with China where if we do get into an agreement, guys, that could send the markets up past these resistance levels. That could pump optimism into the markets where people might, you know, buy more and more shares, driving up the prices of the stocks, large cap stocks, and of course, the SPX index, you know, that could end up, you know, nearing, you know, maybe even get to the those all-time highs at $2,900. But of course, if we don't come to an agreement, you know, we've seen Trump say in the past couple of weeks that if him and the president of China seem like they are nearing a deal, he might push that deadline back. But let's say, you know, they don't come to a deal, they don't see a legitimate deal forming, and let's say they don't come to a deal by March 1st, you know, this could send the markets back down. Who really knows, right? But this time, guys, we are in is super, super critical. So over the past 30 days now, we've been trading in this pattern. We talk about this in pretty much every single video. And right now we're at a very critical spot, right? We're at the resistance portion of this channel and we are at that next resistance roughly at around 2795. So this week, guys, what I'm watching for is is are we going to break the top of this resistance of this channel, which is going to be a very bullish move? And at that point, if we do do that, we'll be breaking to the 2800 level roughly, which again would be another bullish move because we're breaking that resistance. Or are we going to pull back here this upcoming week, potentially if we hit another 5, 10 points to the upside, maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday? Are we going to pull back from there and slowly start to see some selling off in the large caps? 
you know, potentially opening up some opportunities in the short term for some of these bear market ETFs. You know, only time will tell, guys. But right now, I do think we can have another day of green, maybe two days of green, before seeing some potential resistance and a potential pullback. And of course, we're going to end up seeing what ends up happening in these next couple of days. And I'm very, very excited, excited, honestly, for these next two weeks leading up to that market. March 1st deadline. It's going to be pretty hectic, guys. I'm warning you right now. But drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Where are we headed in terms of the SPX? If we take a look very quickly at the NASDAQ futures here, again, for those of you guys that don't know, the markets are closed today, but we can still look at futures to see where the markets could be potentially headed tomorrow. And of course, we can see futures for crude oil, natural gas, gold, which are you know the uh, futures and you know what we look at when we trade some of these inverse ETFs that I talk about on this channel all the time but in terms of the NQ guys NASDAQ futures we're currently up around 12 points and we are climbing up around 0.2 percent and we talked about the resistance on NQ at around 7100 we broke this resistance at around 7060 and now we're looking to fill the gap to the upside excuse me, to the upside here from around 7060 up to around 7100. So the uptrend, guys, look is looking intact, especially with the futures being up right now. And of course, the Dow, very similar to the SPX, but the only uh, you know difference here is that we did break that first resistance in the Dow with the SPX. We did not break that resistance quite yet from the sell-off in the beginning of December, but the Dow, we just recently broke that resistance from the sell-off in uh, December at around 25000 $750. So let's talk about what I'm looking at for this upcoming week and some stocks that you messaged me on, uh, you know, the DM in Instagram. So if you guys missed my video yesterday, I talked about three potential swing trades that I'm watching for this month of February and the beginning of March, which I'm currently in one of those three swing trades. So go check out that video from yesterday. I talked about Cat, J and J, and Microsoft. So I'm not going to be talking about those in this video because I don't want to be um, repetitive. So if you missed yesterday's video, I highly, highly advise you to go check that out if you want to see what I'm personally, you know, looking at trading in terms of swing trades. And I formulated a plan in that video and talked about my plan of where I want to buy, where I want to sell, where I want to cut losses. All of that fun stuff. So go check that out. And let's just hop into a couple of stocks right now that I'm personally looking at for tomorrow other than those three that I mentioned that I'm potentially swing trading. So guys, the first one on the list is UW. And this is an ETF that trades based upon crude oil. And whenever crude oil is going up in price, you know, UWT is going up in price. And we've seen crude oil and made a very bullish move here by breaking above this resistance at around $55. And we can see the future right now, guys, is actually up nearly 1%, up around 45 cents. So this is even a better sign. This is a very good sign that we're continuing this push up. But what I want to see guys before I do potentially trade UWT is I do want to see a little bit of a pullback on crude oil with the potential hold on this new support level which was a previous resistance guys so right now we do notice that crude oil is a bit overbought which is kind of um you know kind of uh worrying me for you know UWT sake because that does mean that UWT is most likely overbought as well not really opening up you know the best buying opportunity right at this moment but again if we do pull back a bit in crude oil that's going to pull back UWT a bit and maybe opening up a better opportunity maybe around 1475 1450 for UWT where we'd like to hop in and ride this momentum ride this uptrend that we are seeing here in UWT. So UWT guys, this one was highly, highly requested. It's on my list right now. 
probably the top for a uh, top of my list tomorrow for a day trade, but I would love to see the pullback and the hold right here at around 55.30, 55.50 ish for crude oils. So the second one I want to talk about today is UGAS, another highly requested ETF here. And for those of you guys that don't know, UGAS trades based upon natural gas futures slash NG. And this obviously, guys, whenever natural gas is going down, UGAS is going down as well. But whenever natural gas is going up, UGAS is going up as well. So we do see a double bottom here on natural gas, which could be the first sign of of a reversal pattern for this particular future, which of course, if it does end up reversing to the upside here, that's going to open up a ton, a ton of margin of profit on you guys, guys. So if we take a look, you know, based off this chart over the past couple of months, really weeks rather, we don't really see you guys or rather natural gas forming a double bottom like it did here at all, right? Pretty much we don't see it. You know, we can see, you know, maybe this is technically a double bottom here. We did pop up, we ended up selling off, but over the span of let's say 10 days, we haven't seen a double bottom in the span of 10 days, right? We we don't see it here. We can see lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. But here we see the clear bottom at 257 and another clear bottom at around 255, 257 again. And for those of you guys that don't know, a double bottom is a very good sign for potential reversal to the upside, right? And now we see natural gas is up around a penny right now, up around 0.4%. Not crazy, not too crazy of a move. But the fact that we're playing with the 50 SMA right here, we're getting a rejected a bit by it, but if we do break above it here, guys, and head back into the mid 265s, this could be the first step towards a full on reversal. Well, actually, the second step, because the first step is the double bottom, the second step would be the break above the 50 SMA, then the third step would ultimately be a break above 270. If we do see this movement into the mid 265s and eventually a break above 270, that's going to be a very good sign that natural gas is reversing to the upside. And that's going to open up a huge, huge margin of profit on you guys, guys. So right now, let me just quickly set an alert on this video for you guys. I'm going to set an alert. I want to get alerted once we do break this 180 SMA here on the 20 day, one hour chart let me quickly do that create an alert at around let's say thirty dollars and fifty cents i want to make it uh alert me when it's at or above 30 50 mark is at or above thirty dollars and fifty cents perfect that'll put it right under the 180 sma right at that spot where i would want to see the potential break so the third one i want to talk about today in today's video is roku and roku is another one that actually somebody commented on in yesterday's video. So let's take a look at Roku. I did look at it briefly before the video. It did look pretty good. And let's take a look, you know, at this stock. So obviously from the beginning of October, pretty much every single stock out there took a very big hit. Of course, there's some, uh, you know, outliers that did not like Tesla, for example, and Hershey, two stocks that did not take much of a hit back in October. But Roku was one of those stocks, guys guys that got absolutely slaughtered guys take a look at how much value and market cap you know roku lost from 26 it went from 77 dollars guys you know down to uh you know 26 dollars holy crap that's actually unbelievable it lost like three times its value nearly in the matter of two months. And obviously that opened up a ridiculous margin of profit, right? A ridiculous margin of profit where if this gap filled, you could potentially make like 200, 300% on a swing trade, best case scenario, if you are trading Roku. And obviously, that's a bit far-fetched, right? You know, I bet you there are some people out there that probably swing traded this and have plans of making 100, 200%, but that's a very, very small percent of people, right? So us, you know, people that want to grab, you know, 5, 10% margin, a little bit more conservative uh, traders, potentially looking to hold it for about a month or two, this move right here that we are seeing, 
seeing is super, super attractive, right? We see, you know, a nice break of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA. That's a very bullish move, indicating, signaling more potential upside to come in the stock. We're seeing higher highs, higher lows, all the things, all the signs we want to see for an uptrend pattern. But the thing I personally want to see and what, you know, I would recommend, not really telling you to do this, guys, because you have to do your own research and trade based upon your own opinion. But what I would want to see here is a bit of a pullback, potentially to test that $50 previous resistance and test it as a new support, guys. Not only is this going to open up a better buying opportunity, right? But it also opens up more margin of profit if we were able to get in here and ride it back up to, let's say, $57, which would be, or $58, which would be a previous resistance, right? So what I would want to see is a pullback here, bring the R side down a bit, and also to see if we do end up holding that $50 level because that is a very critical spot because if we see here back in the middle or towards the end of October rather, you know, we were here at a support level and obviously when we broke under that, you know, due to an who had a bad earnings report, I'm assuming they did since the stock dropped, you know, that ended up being or that resulted in this being a new resistance, right? So the fact that we broke out of it, good sign. Now I just want to see a pullback and see it if it holds it as a new support level, guys. So Roku, thank you for shouting this one out. I really do like it on a technical basis. And if we do pull back, get in at around $50, $51. I do like this one for a potential swing. And it does offer quite a bit of margin here with about 14% from around $50, $51, where that would be the target price for me to get into Roku. So again, Thank you for shouting this one out. I want to pull up my phone very quickly on this Instagram DM because I did get one that I'm forgetting right now. Let me just look very quickly. Oh, Shopify is another one that I got a message for as well as uh, ticker symbol S. T Z. So STZ, let's talk about that one very quickly right now. Constellation Brands Inc. Don't really know that company, but this one is showing a good step towards the upside here, a good step for a reversal pattern to the upside, very similar to Roku. We do see the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, very, very bullish sign here, but we are seeing some struggle to get above that 175 resistance. So very quick, brief analysis here, guys. You know, if we do end up breaking this 175 resistance where we tanked about a couple weeks ago due to a bad earnings report, I'm guessing, guys, because we we did fall from 175 down to 150. If we do break that level, that's going to be a very good, you know, breakout pattern, breakout signal for STZ with the next resistance. Honestly, guys, being at around let's say $190. So, it is a bit um that that is a bit of a uh you know, far not really far fetched, but that is a bit of a sizable move to the upside, but if we do end up popping above here, guys, it is worth watching to capture at least some of that 8% margin that is being offered um, in STZ. So keep an eye on that break. I'm actually going to set an alert for this one because I do like the potential breakout pattern that is forming here. I'm going to set an alert, let's say, at 176. Perfect. And I'm going to add that one to my active watch list, STZ. TZ. So good call out there. Thank you again for calling that one out if you're watching from the DM on Instagram. So let's talk about Shopify very quickly. This is another one that was being talked about in the group chat yesterday, the Discord chat. If you want to get in there, 100% free. Link is down below in the, in the description box. And I also got a DM about this one as well. And Shopify, guys, this one has been on an absolute tear recently from the big drop in the beginning of, uh, in the middle of December, rather, from 162 down to 117. Now we're already up. We're all the way back up to about $181. The uptrend looking very nicely. We're holding that 50 SMA nicely the 50 SMA cross above the 180 SMA everything is looking nice here so we do notice guys a potential triple top in Shopify right here so what I want to see is a breakout well we can honestly say this is 
almost a quadruple top in a sense. Actually, now we can't really say that because this is down. This one's at about 176. This one's at about 179, 180, and we're nearing that resistance again. So yeah, you can you could kind of say it's a triple top here, or you know, a potential triple top forming depending on what happens on Tuesday. But if we do pop out here, guys, if we do end up riding into the 180s again. You know, this could be another breakout pattern for Shopify to continue to push up, especially if the entire market as a whole sees more bullish sentiment. Let's say we do come to a trade deal. You know, this sends up large cap stocks. Shopify is most likely going to head along with that trend and head back into the 180s, maybe mid 185s, mid or maybe even 190s, guys, to be completely honest. But the thing to keep an eye on, guys, is that we are at all time highs in terms of Shopify. So if you don't like you know, trading stocks that are already at all-time highs. If you like getting in on dips like J&J, &J, Microsoft, and Cat that I talked about in yesterday's video, this trade might not be for you. But again, you know, if the markets do run up, if, you know, large caps start to push up, you know, we do get to a trade war agreement, this could end up running up as well, maybe to the 185s, 190. And the truth is, if we don't have any previous resistances to judge this on, we don't really know where it can stop guys right and the fact that we are at all-time highs now we just have to play it by ear see how the trend looks in the next couple of days and we really don't know where it could end up stopping but again if we do end up breaking 180 we could be headed back to 185 or not really back to 185 to 185 to 190 for the first time in the stock's history and this is going to be obviously the continuation of the uptrend guys so that is another one that i'm personally watching and we, again we got that dm and the uh the shout out in the discord group chat as well so the main ones guys that i'm watching for a day trade tomorrow are uwt and you guys these you know inverse etfs i'm typically day trading them 99 percent of the time i really never swing trade these at all ever i'm mostly sticking to large cap stocks to swing trade shopify is on my swing trade list you know cat microsoft jnj &J, stz i really like like that one as well and what else do we talk about roku i'm gonna add roku to the list as well i really like the pattern on roku these are larger cap stocks that i am more comfortable and more confident in swing trading rather than these volatile etfs that really aren't meant to be swing traded um in the first place so that's a pretty much uh basis that's a, that's the whole basis here of what i'm looking at what i'm looking to trade for this upcoming week guys and again if you guys did not check out my video from yesterday go check that out i talk about the three tickers in depth from j and j microsoft and caterpillar guys so go check out that video if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit that like button it really does help the channel grow and i really do appreciate everybody out there for watching this content if you enjoy the content and want to see more videos from me Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck preparing today for tomorrow. And of course, good luck trading tomorrow. If you guys are in the Discord chat, I'll chat with you guys there. Have a great day. Peace out.